Hi kids, I'm Michael Bain and welcome to Triggered, coming to you from the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains and Dragon House Studios, where we are in a flood of elk. And I mean a complete and total flood of elk. How many elk, you might ask, is a flood? Well, yesterday, just running into town very quickly, we passed two separate herds of elk within a few miles of the secret hidden bunker. Both of those herds were over 200 animals. That's 400 elk. That's a lot of elk. Now, interesting thing is, usually if you want to hear elk bugle, which is what they do in the rut, right? Challenge, challenge. It's a bugle, which doesn't sound like a bugle at all. It sounds more like somebody's trying to strangle a rabbit. But if you want to hear an elk bugle, usually you have to drive to Estes Park, like edge of Rocky Mountain National Park, and stand in line with maybe two or three hundred tourists, many of whom are a lot dumber than the elk and who don't fully understand what the horns on the bull elk's heads are for, to hear them bugle once. Last year we went up, we literally stood double parked, everybody on the side of the road, crowds of people, one elk, bugle. That was it. However, since all the elk are down here, of course driven by weird weather, fires, whatever, we've been able to hear them bugle all the time. And you're saying now, what does an elk bugle sound like? It sounds like this. Okay, that's pretty cool, right? You're thinking, Michael's going elk hunting. Nah, I think season's passed, by the way. In any case, today I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Volkortsen Summit. That originally, it's a gun that I was going to shoot in Mechanical Division of Rimfire Challenge Shooting Association, which basically, uh, COVID-19, the Chinese virus, kind of wiped out all our matches. So in talking to Scott Volkortsen, we decided to see how this gun would line up as a precision 22 long range 22. So one of the things I did is I moved it to this chassis. This chassis, a chassis is a stock. Usually it's an aluminum stock, right? This is chassis, it's a G22 Junior, or I think, what, G22 Mini, G22 Junior from Scott McCrees, McCrees Precision, who've been making precision rifle stocks for a long time. And it uses, obviously, a buffer tube here to carry the stock, an AR stock, AR hand grip, and otherwise, it just sits in, bolts in very tightly. And I've just started working with it finally out on the range. So far, I'm really, really happy. Um, this gun, as it sits right here, will shoot a one-hole group at 50 yards. It's very, very good. What you have on this, the, the Volk, obviously the Volkortsen Summit, it's a straight pull bolt action. We've talked about that before. You've seen it on high-end guns like Anschutz. Uh, Sometimes biathlon rifles I've seen with straight pull. This one was developed, I think, by PSA and then, and then Volkortz and took over production on it. The cool thing about this particular receiver is it's stainless steel. I specified that. You can get them in aluminum. But this one is stainless steel with a machined Picatinny rail on top. That's a 20 MOA rail. Honestly, I would have kind of rather had a 30 MOA rail, but again, so you can't always get what you want. Remember that. It has a carbon fiber match barrel that Volkortsen has been working on for ages. Threaded for a suppressor, which typically we will be using one of my suppressors in it. The stock itself here, this is from Luth AR, Randy Luth, my good friend Randy. This is a great stock. It's adjustable for everything. Um, it's got a good cheek piece on it. You can obviously use various and sundry adjustments that you're going to have. you got a pick rail on the bottom if you want to clamp on one of the bags that you can get that clamps down, or if you want to clamp a monopod on the bottom. I like this here, the grip. It's good, comfortable for me to use. Right now, a couple points, uh, accessories on it. Bipod, you have to have a bipod to shoot 22 long range. This particular bipod is an inexpensive bipod from Caldwell, which when I got, I was prepared to really hate. It turns out I don't really hate it. it turns out I actually like it. It doesn't have all those spring-loaded things and neat things like that, but it's easy to adjust. It's sturdy. I have a carbon fiber legs. Uh, it's been a nice bipod, but obviously here it's on a uh, uh, Picatinny rail mounted on the front. I, you know, I considered going with an Arca rail, uh, a real right stuff, standard ARCA rail, and that may come to that. However, let's talk about the scope. This is Crimson Trace. It's a 4-20. to 20. 
and I have no problem with it. I'm not crazy about the reticle for competition. If I was hunting with it, I got no problem. If I was just taking uh, long range shots, practicing with it, I have no problem. A reticle is a little bit not usable for competition where you have to pick up the dot quick. You have to pick up that reticle very quickly. But I'm very excited to say Crimson Trace is now a sponsor here, michaelbain.tv and Triggered. And we have been talking a lot about scopes. And so probably starting next week or two weeks out, you're going to see the newest scopes from Crimson Trace, including a 5 to 25 with exactly the reticle I wanted. Sometimes it does help to know the bosses. So that will be replacing this scope. It's an excellent scope. The glass is super. Everything about the scope is good. It's just to me not an ideal competition reticle. But the next one, ideal competition reticle, walking away. I may change the chassis to get more weight. Why would I do that? Weight equals stability. When you're talking about throwing this gun up on, say, a ladder, you don't want the gun to move. You don't want the gun to bounce around and things. You want stability. Gun sits still. So I may change out to a different McGreese chassis or one of the other chassis and pick up a couple of pounds of weight on this rifle. But as it sits right now, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Once again, the advantage of this rifle over my Super 1022, Ruger 1022. My 1022 will also, I shot it, in fact, last week. I pulled it out. I hadn't shot it in a long time. I thought, oh, I hope it works. SK match, it shot uh, once again into one hole at 50 yards, which is the ante if you want to shoot long range competition. But one of the things I wanted just to mention to you, because I've been talking about chassis and stocks. Let me show you another gun really quickly and talk about form versus function. This is a Ruger Custom Shop 1022, uh, a race gun built from the ground up for competition. It is a great race gun. It is a stock that is perfect for what it's designed for. If you go back to the mid-1800s, I think Lewis Sullivan, who is an architect, coined the phrase, form follows function. What do you want it to do? Design it so that it does that. This is a race gun for going fast. How do I know that? Well, just the way it sits here, the angle of the grip. You see this Barracuda-like extension? I say Barracuda because Boyd Stock started it. So it's kind of an extension. That way I'm gripping without anything touching the barrel. I don't want anything to touch the barrel at all. I want to go fast. I want to push the gun back and forth. This stock and similar ones made by Tactical Solutions, by Volkortsen, by Boyd are perfect race stocks, but we're not racing in Precision 22. Since we're talking about form versus function, I want to show you one other stock. This is my Ruger American 22. Uh, 22 long rifle feeds off 1022 magazines. It is in a Boyd traditional stock. Why is it in a Boyd traditional stock? Well, the function of this rifle is to help me train for hunting. So what I have here is a hunting stock on this gun. It's heavier than the stock that came on it. It is designed almost exactly like my favorite hunting rifles. So when I take this out and train with it and shoot with it, then one of the things I'm able to do is port those skills over to the centerfire guns. So when we say form follows function, that's what it means. We choose stocks, we choose accessories based on what we intend the gun to do. Okay, now when we come back, you're going to see something you have never seen on Triggered because we are going to go mano a mano with the evil that lurks in the dark. This week's Triggered is brought to you by Franklin Armory the home of innovation in firearms. Volkortsen, engineering the world's best rimfires. Taurus, USA, designed to protect. Arms Corps, Rock Island Armory, celebrating 30 years of innovation. And Revolution Targets, 21st Century Steel. Science made its greatest mistake. What unknown terror?
was born that night. Night of the Lepus. They're here. I can smell them in the wind. I can feel them. They're stinky, nasty, huge teeth. Rancid, no blood. They're evil, 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 I tell you. It's time to find them. They could be anywhere. Anywhere. Die, spawn of Satan! Both of them, peppered, slaughtered, dirt. Oh, come on, admit it, that was a lot of fun, right? And didn't you always suspect that rabbits were evil, just plain evil? Hang on, when Triggered returns, we're going to talk about the Henry Garden Gun, and what's old is new again. Years of laziness led to this very moment. Looks like Stan's gonna need some help. Let's get some organization in here. Some lighting, some security, some monitoring. That does look nice. Imagine that. There's more room in an organized vault. Keep your valuables organized, safe, and secure with Lockdown. Secure your lifestyle. Welcome back to Triggered and our homage to Night of the Lupus and the Henry Garden Gun. So what Henry has done is typical of the thinking that you see at Henry, outside the box thinking. Uh, Anthony Imperato and his team do a lot of interesting things. They took their hugely successful H001 22 rifle. I think I have two of them, three of them, lever action 22 rifle, super guns, and they turned them into this which is, in effect, a 22 long rifle shotgun. It has a smooth bore barrel, which is why it has an 18 and a half inch barrel, because I think they, uh, uh, the 22s can get them with 16, 16 and a half inch barrels. That's too short for a shotgun, so you gotta go 18 inches because of the NFA, designed by morons, administered by morons. So we have a little bitty shotgun here, and what it shoots are these guys. They are 22 shot shells. And they have been around since roughly the dawn of time, right? When I was a kid, we, we called them snake shot. And you know what we used them for? Snakes. <laughs> what a shock. And rats and pigeons and garden pest. They exist for garden pest. And in fact, they also existed to be used in some carnival shooting galleries. But that's another story. So, Henry decided to bring back the garden gun. When I say bring back, if you go to late 18th century, early 19th century in America, uh, early 20th century, I'm sorry, early, late 19th, early 20th, we had a different relationship with guns. There wasn't a lot of Karens running around going like, oh my God, it's a gun, Jesus, I'm so scared. I wet myself just a little. But typically everybody had guns. Also, everybody had gardens. And it, they kind of went together, a little bit more of a self-sufficiency. And so what you saw first starting in Europe, way back in Europe, and then bringing that over to the United States, were guns that shot very small bore shot cartridges, either 22 like this or 
Uh, I guess the European ones use something called 9mm Flobert. Good luck on finding that. <laughs> but essentially, the guns were for garden annoying pests. Because these, these cartridges are all loaded with number 12 shot, like anywhere between 25 and 30 grains, uh, 31 grains of number 12 shot, which disperses very quickly. In fact, what you have is a maximum of a 15 yard gun or 15 foot gun. That's it. But within that range, it's perfect for annoying pests. Now, I, I looked at a lot of reviews of this gun, by the way, and uh, interestingly enough, everybody went out and shot patterns and to show you all this stuff. I went out and shot pests with it. Uh, the first one we shot was a rattlesnake who I tried, I seriously tried to relocate. We, we laughed about it last week on the podcast, Benny Hill Music. The more I tried to pick the stupid snake up, the more convinced the snake was that he could bite me really badly. And so finally, when it got to a point where he got to a place where I could not get him out, I'm like, all right, Junior, I'm going to send you down the line. And here, I even shot him with the hang tag, still hanging on it, right? So I used this. This is federal shot. I would rather use CCI, but CCI is pretty much as rare as 9mm Flobert these days. Uh, you have to hunt for it, and I have not yet been able to find it. But I did find the federal shot. Shot the snake four or five feet, snake died, which is what you want. I said, wow, this is pretty handy. So I started talking to a lot of my friends who uh, have gardens and, and who are gun people and live in gun-friendly states that are not New Jersey or Connecticut, for heaven's sakes. But they said, oh, yeah, yeah, as soon as the Henry Garden gun came out, we all bought one because we all have annoying things that we want to go away. Now, it's interesting that that's what old is, is, is becomes new again. Because, again, if you go back and look at the ads, you go back and look at the early, like, 19, uh, 1910, 1912 ads for firearms, you see a lot of, of 22 or 22 shot that are, like, Specifically listed, the perfect gun for pest. Uh, you see them also for bicycle. I love that. Bicycle guns. You should always carry a gun on your bicycle. And as a dedicated bicyclist, I hone to that, even here in the 21st century. But these were useful tools, not heirloom guns. But this is a really pretty nice looking gun. 15 rounds. You get 15 rounds of shot in it. So if you're attacked by a, a coven of rattlesnakes, and, and oddly enough, uh, yesterday, in talking to my friend Andy Larson, who Skinner sights, and he of course lives in Montana, he told me this incredible story of a few years back where he ran up into a den of rattlesnakes. And he didn't realize it was a den of rattlesnakes. And he saw one buzzing and he goes, wow, that's really close. And he shot it. And then he, his, he heard a noise that was like a symphony of buzzing. When it was all over, he'd shot 27 rattlesnakes all pretty much arm's length, leg length distance. He said he came back sweating profusely. But if you're salted by rattlesnakes in packs, sorry Stephen Dick, I know you're you know super guy with rattlesnakes, perfect for it. Uh, it's also good for, for squirrels within that 15 foot distance. You're not going to be able to push shot out. But the 15 foot distance is what makes this such a useful tool. You don't have to worry about backstops because somewhere after 15 feet, those number 12 pellets, which are pretty much dust, vanish into the haze. They're not going to go any farther. Now, the second patterning test I had with this rifle was a pack rat, or you can call them a woods rat. Some people call them roof rats. Essentially, it's the same rat. They're, they're a very large rat that lives in the field. That's why they call them field rats, lives in the rocks uh, everywhere. They are easily the most annoying animals in the world. They're, they're, for example, their IQ is five points higher than the governor of Colorado, um, and they could do a better job of running the state, certainly. But they're very smart animals. They're crafty, and, and they will destroy your garden. So all of us who, who live in the rocks up here where field rats, pack rats are very, very common, fight a never-ending battle against these guys in the garden. So with this guy, I had, hey, pack rat, chased him out, all this kind of stuff happening. He hid himself in a corner. He looked at me, looked me right in the eye, and he goes, now what are you going to do, human? I said, I'd like to introduce you to the Henry Garden gun. It only has a 15-foot range, but you are at about, I don't know, five feet. So 
Bye. Great thing about this, in shooting that pack rat, recently we had a similar problem with the pack rat. It was just demolishing stuff. We finally caught it at dusk. I whipped out my, my, uh, my Taurus Judge, which we've always talked about as a great snake rat pest gun, with federal buckshot. So I shot that rat with federal buckshot, which bounced off the ground and amazingly managed to kill the internet. The, one of the pellets sliced right through the coaxial cable that feeds the internet into my house. So when they came out to repair it, I said, they said, you had a rodent problem? I said, in a manner of speaking, yes. However, you're not going to have that problem with number 12 shot. So, Henry, this is a great rifle. The uh, 001s are a wonderful rifle. They separated it out from those. It's got this, this blackened ash grip stock. So you can look at it and say, oh, that's the smoothbore one. It has the classic Henry lever, which is, it's really good. It is a super smooth, absolutely flawless lever. Um, I think everybody that has a garden should have one of these, and you should always keep the hang tags on it, because you know what? It looks kind of cool. So that's it for this week. You know, we have slain the Dread Bunny. We have discussed slaying the other things. We have talked a lot about this super Henry. So, until next week, as always, you can find us on michaelbain.tv. Find us on YouTube. Uh, by all means, find us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube, and you can watch us on television, which is where we watch it. Everest.com finally has my celebrity storefront up. I'm hoping to become a celebrity soon for the storefront, but you can see back episodes of Shooting Gallery and episodes of Triggered there. And we will see you next week right here with the Elk.